All right, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today for our Grandview first year student information Zoom session. Um, today we're going to be talking about um, all of our um, services and kind of experiences from our career center perspective. Um, and then we will also be talking about um, different service learning opportunities across the metro here in the Des Moines area. Um, and so you guys will have an opportunity to listen um, to a couple of our speakers talk about um, kind of um, these areas in which kind of they're experts in. So first off, we have um, Susie Stearns, who is joining us today. Um, and she um, will be, um, she is the director of the Career Center here at Grandview. Um, and she will kind of start off our Zoom session today. Um, if you guys kind of throughout the Zoom session um, have any questions, go ahead and um, you can put those into the chat. Um, and uh, toward the end, we'll go ahead and kind of um, have an opportunity for our speakers to answer those questions. Um, if you have any questions that are more specific to your situation, meaning that they're more um, directly about kind of your um, circumstances, admission, et cetera, um, you can privately message um, either Megan Bradley, who is on um, the Zoom, or you can privately message me. My name is Lupita. You'll see my name show up as Grandview University, um, and we can kind of tackle those questions for you. Um, so um, thank you again for joining us, and we are going to go ahead and get started with um, Susie's presentation. So Susie, it's all oh, yours. Excellent. Okay, so I'm Susie Stearns. I'm the director of the Career Center, and what I'm going to do is open a PowerPoint presentation, and hopefully we're in presentation mode now. Can you give me a thumbs up, Lupita? Yep. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take you through a quick PowerPoint presentation. Hopefully, if I do my job right, um, I'll prompt a few questions and I'll answer a few questions. So at the end of this or any time in the future, if you wanna follow up with me, you can contact me um, via the phone. You can shoot me an email at sterns at grandview.edu. You can also find me on LinkedIn and you can follow the Career Center on Facebook and Twitter. So we are gonna start with a question. A question that I'm curious if any of you know. Do any of my colleagues know the answer to the Witham factor? Anybody? Okay. So this is, so I'm assuming that students don't know this either, but I would contend that this is a question that we all ask ourselves on a pretty regular basis about big things and little things. It's called the Witham factor. So I'm gonna reveal, and if we were in person, I would give a Snickers candy bar to whomever could come up with the answer for this. So in the chat, if you wanna throw a guess out there, you can sure do that. But we're gonna start with this question, then I'm gonna answer it, and then we're gonna revisit it at the end. So it stands for what's in it for me. That's the question we're trying to answer today right? When you think about your college experience, you're trying to, you know, you're wrestling with a lot of opportunity and you're trying to get a level of confidence and comfortability with your choice. So what I want to do through the course of this presentation is let's take a macro look first. So when we try to answer the question, what's in it for me, we're going to look at Des Moines first, okay? And we're going to try to answer that question. What's in it for you if you choose Des Moines? What's in it for you if you choose the east side of Des Moines and Grandview specifically? And then what's in it for you if you engage with the Career Center? So we're gonna go why Des Moines? Let's start with that big question. And some of you who are watching this, you might be from Des Moines, but I would assert that there's probably a lot of things about Des Moines that you don't already know. So hopefully some of these statistics that I'm putting on the screen kind of excite you a little bit more when you think about your professional career and development goals. If you are out of state or out of country, you should know that these are unbiased statistics and rankings 
that show that Des Moines is not only a capital city, but it's a thriving metropolitan and growing market. So you can see top 10 best place for business and careers. Number five for best place to live, cost of living. I don't care if you're a college student or a mid or late career professional, cost of living is always important. So the fact that we're 10% lower than the national average is a great thing. Also in Des Moines, you're gonna have access to really great quality of life opportunities. We have a high ranking with World Festival and Event City and also number one in the minor league sports market. Then the last statistic there, we are the fastest growing major metro in the Midwest, according to US Census Bureau for 2018. All right, so we just took a look at kind of the greater Des Moines market and some key rankings. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at key industry leaders. And that might be, you know, what does that mean exactly? So what I want to do is kind of give some definition to that. It would be great if I could plaster logos of all of our partners on this screen, but I can't do that because I don't have the authority from all of their marketing departments. But you should know that in the Des Moines area, we have key industry leaders in advanced manufacturing, ag bioscience, Actually, Des Moines is right in the middle of America's cultivation corridor. We are home to data and distribution centers like Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, and Amazon. Certainly many of you know that we are a Mecca for insurance and financial services, also logistics, technology, and healthcare. So what I did is since I can't use the logos without permission from anybody, everybody, what I did was I did a quick look at our recent graduates, and I also took a look at where our current and recent internship bases have been. So I'm gonna read that list for you. And hopefully this makes you go, oh, those are recognizable names. So if you choose Des Moines and you choose Grandview and you work with a career center, quite possibly you're going to find yourself in an internship or you're going to launch your career in one of the following. Wells Fargo, Unity Point Health Partners, Principal Financial Group, IV, Mercy One, Nationwide, John Deere, Corteva, Wellmark, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Come and Go, UPS, Mercer Health and Benefits, EMC Insurance, DZ Manufacturing, Casey's, Tones, I'm on the second page now, Athene, FBL Farm Bureau Financial Group, and Mid-American Energy. So that's my short list, and that's kind of a long list, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of an insider view, and I've dropped some names there of some of our key employer partners. Okay, so the last bullet on why Des Moines, remember we're, we're trying to answer that question, what's in it for me if I choose Des Moines? So all of that that I just shared with you, and also, you know, the fact that you're going to be entering into a market that is growing in terms of employment growth. So you're going to see a bar graph that shows you in recent, let's see, it was U.S. Labor um, Bureau of Labor Statistics compared to all of the Midwestern cities that are pretty notable. You're going to find that Des Moines ranks highest in terms of employment growth, which is important. So I would be remiss if, you know, I didn't identify kind of the monster in the room and that monster is called COVID-19. So there isn't any major metropolitan area that isn't negatively impacted by COVID right now. But, you know, all of the indicators are that our employers are still hiring and that when we recover from this pandemic, we are going to return to a really robust job seeker environment. All right. So hopefully, I'm going to take two seconds. <clears throat> take a quick drink. All right. So hopefully we answered why Des Moines and the WIFM factor. What's in it for you? Now we're going to talk about Grandview. What's in it for you if you choose Grandview, if you choose this little nugget on the east side of Des Moines? 
at Grandview, um, we like to say that we, we um, educate and embrace the whole person. We engage, equip, and empower the whole person, mind, body, and spirit. So you're going to see an engagement. You're going to have access to over 40 academic majors and 28 minors. So certainly you're going to engage academically. You're going to be involved potentially in collegiate sports and extracurricular activities. Also, you may get involved in clubs, organizations, and leadership development. And in honor of today, we engage you as family. So I have to show I'm where I'm rocking my family t-shirt today. Heidi, where's your family t-shirt? Not on you, but you don't have it. I do have a, a Grandview shirt on today, though. Awesome. Lead, so all love all. Lead all love all. Yes, if you come to Grandview and you engage with us, you're going to have no shirt, no shortage of swag and t-shirts. All right, so we're family and we engage you. We equip, we equip you. So we know that you're here to get a degree and to prepare for your life after college. So certainly that's going to happen through rigorous coursework. So you're going to have access to faculty and staff in small classes and all modalities. So modalities means in-person and online, virtual, synchronous, asynchronous, accelerated, evening, weekends, whatever it is that you're going to need to be successful in achieving your career goals through the attainment of your degree. All right, let's see, equipping also comes in the form of experiential learning. So you're gonna have a priority in your academic major on the internships, service learning, co-ops, externships, and gig work. And lastly, on Y Grandview, we empower you with an entire student network. So, you know, our goal is student success for every student. We meet you where you are, we embrace your story, we engage you, we equip you, and we empower you, every part of you, in achieving that end goal. So it's going to be your GV complete folks who are gonna to talk to you about your financial commitments and also your four-year plan of study faculty, administration, academic advisors, coaches, professional staff. Each of us are gonna be preparing you and working in a support network to ensure your success. All right, so we've talked, I keep revisiting this, but the WIFM factor, we looked at why Des Moines, why Grandview, now why the Career Center. So in the Career Center, we, we employ what I call a one-to-one -one career advising and counseling model. And in that, we're going to provide comprehensive supports. So that's gonna come in the form of career exploration. We have tools, tips, resources to help you figure out, you know, maybe what is it that you're going to decide for an academic major, which is going to help inform what you're going to do for a career pathway. Additionally, any good career center is going to help you with the application process. So making sure that you have all of your materials ready, like your resume, your cover letter, self-assessments, job prospecting, mock interviews, salary negotiations. So all of that is readily available to you. We also recently adapted to the Handshake platform. So Handshake is the leading job and internship platform for college and young professionals. So that is where you're going to find job and internships. Additionally, we're going to provide you in-person and virtual career and professional development events where you have regular engagement with employers, also through pre-select interview events like the accounting interview day, the STEM pre-select interview day and others. In the Career Center, we administer the work study and on-campus employment program. So potentially you are looking for an on-campus job to help you with a little bit of fun money, or maybe you wanna help shore up the financial gap. So if you're looking for on-campus employment, the Career Center can help you with that. 
And then the last area that I want to make sure that I touch on is preparing you for graduate and professional school. So that's going to be test prep guidance, support with shadowing and observation hours, patient contact hours, and then um, working with centralized application services. So I'm running out of breath and out of voice because I've been talking all day, but hopefully I have enough wind left in me to answer the question, the WIFM question with some outcomes. So the WIFM question is, what's in it for me? And if I were you, you know, I'd be saying that all sounds good and you're a professional staff member, so you're gonna answer that way, but can you prove it, you know, prove it prove what's in it for me. So that's what I'm doing here with my outcomes page. The annual graduate survey shows statistically really high rates in terms of our placement. And then also I included some Iowa indicators. And then the last thing that I wanna make sure that I feature is the fact that year over year, approximately 10% of our class has immediate acceptance into graduate and professional school. So it's gonna be all of those designations, PhD, MD, DO, DBT, and the list goes on. So um, that's what I have for you, but I don't want you to take just my word for it. So I embedded a couple of student pr perspectives. The first one, I want you to hear from your peers and these are students who are just a few steps ahead of you in terms of, you know, advancing themselves. So I'm going to go ahead. You can read the profile here. And if technology is being friendly to me today, let's hope we're going to have Colton's profile. Hi, my name is Colton Wallner from Creston, Iowa. I chose Grandview because of the great campus small class sizes and Des Moines has a ton of opportunities. My major is a pre-professional student uh, with a pursuing a career as a physical therapist. At Grandview, I've been part of the football team. Des Moines, I've taken advantage of the great volunteer opportunities in Des Moines and I've completed observation hours at various locations. The Career Center offers great support with individual meetings to go over your agenda, tips for the GRE, how to apply, um, interview tips, as well as mock interviews. Right now in the process, I have a DPT offer from one school and I just completed an interview with another. I would highly recommend taking advantage of the Career Center services. They offer great support and great guidance and I couldn't imagine to complete this process without them. All right, so that was Colton. Hopefully did that come through okay? Thumbs up, all right. So I've been working with Colton for about two years and if you're a pre-professional student and you're thinking about, you know, coming to Grandview or pre-professional track, and you're thinking, you know, I'm gonna pursue an MD or a DPT, we should start working together sooner than later because you're gonna need to get things like graduate hours, um, volunteer hours, Heidi will talk about that. Certainly observation hours, patient contact hours, all of that is important. So. I wanted to make sure that I featured that so that you could see, um, you know, what you have to do if you're thinking pre-professional. All right, my second testimonial is from Alexis Holes, and she's a different profile. She is an upper level student leader. She's seeking an internship for next summer. So I've been working with Alexis since this past summer, and she's doing all the right things, but um, I'll let her tell her a little bit in terms of how she's taking advantage of our source resources. Hi, my name is Alexis Hall, and I'm a business administration major with a minor in Spanish. I'm from Earlham, Iowa, and I chose Grandview because of the small class sizes and it's close to home. The Career Center is helping me look for a competitive 2021 internship, and the way that they help me do this is they've helped enhance my LinkedIn and Handshake profile They've reviewed my resume and my cover letters, and they've helped connect me with people who work in the companies that I'm applying for. I think that the Career Center is super great at helping students kind of find the path that they want to go towards for jobs and internships. I definitely encourage you to reach out to them. 
Okay, so Alexis is a pleasure to work with and she informed me just yesterday that she has another interview next week. So all of these interviews are happening right now for next summer. So if there's anybody who's thinking, you know, who, who's worried about, are there going to be internship opportunities in the future? Absolutely. And the timeline is way sooner than you think. So that's why we like to engage with students early and often. All right, so we're gonna go, whoops. There's Alexis again. All right, so this is the last one. Here are, this is a feature that we captured last summer and it's two accounting majors and they have a good story. I don't think they tell the whole story, but I'll go ahead and share the video and then I'll share the outcome. The relationships you build along the way are just so much more important. Uh, the people I've met with, um, it's the personality you bring to the table. Uh, you can be taught those other characters, uh, characteristics when you're on the job and trained, and you will be trained, but you can't teach a good personality. You can't teach someone to show up every day uh, on time and teach uh, just to be uh, a great worker. You can't really learn that in class, but you can be shown that, and I think Susie showed, showed us how to do that. She does a good job at preparing you for what you're going to have on your face in the future is she, I mean, the interview process, she made it seem like a real interview. And then going off of that, she tells you like, she does a lot of job research. So whenever I had to pick if I want to accept the job offer that I got, or if I didn't, or what an internship I should go for, she has a lot of connections that people have graduated and went to work there. She reached out to a couple of people for me and just asked like, how hard is it to switch between on and tax and stuff like that? So like, if you have questions that are like relevant to what you're gonna be doing in the future, she does a good job explaining that to you the best she can. I've learned more socially here than I have, I guess, class-wise or material-wise. Uh, just how to interact with uh, employers or other people like, uh, that we'll be working with <laughs> soon. Just how to interact with them, learn interview questions, um, do research about those different companies and what you're going to be doing just so you feel confident in what you're going to be saying. It's huge. Even if it's just for to help build a resume, it's one that makes it a lot easier to get hired. It makes you a lot more remarkable. If you have a good resume because some people don't even know how to build it and, and they have spelling errors and stuff like that. She helps with literally creating it, formatting it, literally anything you need with it. I'd say she helped us kind of change our mindset pretty quickly. I'd say after our freshman year, we started to learn the process of uh, how we wanted uh, to shape our college our four years out, um, creating an investment club, um, getting in touch with the right people, with the right uh, accounting professors, with Susie, uh, helping me with a position to get into the business office as a work study position. It just kind of, uh, all the right steps were kind of taken to get to a successful position before I even graduate. All right, so that is, that's it for student testimonials. It's kind of embarrassing. I mean, I don't like the name dropping. I don't like Susie being called out, whatever. It's just the career service work that we do. And it's a privilege to get to work with students like that, like all of these students. And, and we anticipate that for students who are listening in today or in the future, that we will engage you early and often as well. But, um, you know, the success story of Josh and Kevin is definitely something that I love to talk about because they did take advantage of resources and they started early. I started working with them after their freshman year. They graduate in spring of 2021 and they both have full-time accounting job offers already secured. So that can be your future. At Grandview this past summer, when many internships were being canceled, they both were able to have internships in the accounting field that were honored because they were secured way before the pandemic hit. So, so just know that those types of resources and supports are available for you. And with that, I'm just gonna close it the way that I started with my contact information. Please feel free. If anything that you saw here today prompts any questions, shoot me an email um, or give me a phone call. 
also with prospective students, if you don't know what your academic major is going to be and you're stressing out about that, I would encourage you to give yourself some grace and trust that you'll figure it out. Reach out to me. Um, we have assessments and I'd love to start working with you at any point to help you. So when you start college, you do so with confidence. So that's it for me. Any questions? All right, thank you so much, Susie. Yeah. All right, let me get here. All right, so um, again, thank you so much, Susie, for your information. Um, we are going to maybe reserve um, a little bit of time toward the end of our complete presentation to take some of the questions that have been asked. And then um, we're gonna jump into um, uh, Heidi Priest's presentation. Um, and Heidi Priest is the um, Director of Student Involvement and New Student Programs here at Grandview University. So she's gonna have a little bit of information for you, um, prospective students on um, ways that you can get involved and take advantage of Des Moines. Um, and um, I'll let Heidi kind of take, um, take over. All right, thank you. I don't have a formal presentation to show you, but I do wanna to talk to you about um, different options that we have available for service um, at Greenview's campus. And so um, and we kind of, I break it down into kind of three different areas of ways that you can get involved um, volunteering here on campus or in the Des Moines community. Uh, because Grandview is in the Des Moines community, we have so many different community partners um, through nonprofits that you can get involved with um, off campus and on campus. Um, we're very, very fortunate to have so many different sites for students to get experience at. So at Grandview, we have an, an organization called Viking Volunteers, and that organization is a student-led organization. I advise that group, but we have students that are really passionate about service and getting involved in the community. And so um, they do, they meet as, a, as an organization twice a month, but then they do probably three to four, some, some months more than four different events um, centered around service. So they go out in the community, um, things that they've done is they've, they've served meals at the Ronald McDonald House. Um, they do um, a food drive every year. Um, we have a little free food pantry on our campus for our Grandview community and the surrounding um, campus community. And they um, really take the lead on making sure that there's food in that and advertising that option for students. Um, other things they've done is they've done uh, meals from the Heartland where they package meals. They do um, work with JAPA, which is a homeless outreach um, service in the Des Moines community where they go actually in the homeless camps and do re they reach out to um, people that are homeless um, and they collect things for um, that are needed for that population as well. Um, so they just kind of see what the needs are in the community and they really try to um, to rally Grandview students around that need and, and get them involved and just make them aware of the, the issues in our community um, that need support. So that's a student organization and that really is something that students um, can start doing right away when you, when you get here your freshman year, you can get involved in that organization. Um, and then another way that you can get involved in service is we have an AmeriCorps program on our campus. And every year we um, are looking for students that are, you know, really know that they have a passion for service and probably would be volunteering regardless of if they got involved in the AmeriCorps program or not. Um, and that program is, it's 300 hours of service that you do. And then you have a full calendar year to do that service. And that service all has to be done kind of in the Des Moines community. So has to impact the, the community that the institution is 
is physically in. So um, for us, obviously, that's the Des Moines Metro. So they can, they serve the 300 hours. Um, they have a primary site that they serve at, but then they can get some other hours in at some like secondary sites. Um, and we really try to match a student up with uh, their interests. So we've had students that are very interested, maybe they're an ed major and they're very interested in working in elementary education. So we have some partners with Des Moines Public Schools or some nonprofits that work with Des Moines Public Schools like Everybody Wins or um, the Dreamer Academy um, that works with Des Moines Public Schools. So we'll get students um, kind of connected with them and they can do service hours. And it's a great way for them to get into, you know, the school and in their field that they want to pursue um, and get some, some hands-on experience and get that experience. Um, and then when they complete their 300 hours through the AmeriCorps program, you get an education award. Um, and that's about $1,300 now that you get at the end of that. And you can use for your tuition, you can use to save it and have it go towards if you have to take out any loans for school, or we've had students use it, save it and use it for graduate school after their time at Grandview because they know they're gonna go on to graduate school. So, and that's a program that if you, start that and you have a positive experience, typically you can do that more than one year on our campus. So that's a great way to get just some some very practical experience. We've had a lot of students that are looking into like medical school or PT school that are looking for um, service hours to to put on those um, med school applications. And that is that's awesome. Like we we love um, helping students kind of explore that and being able to volunteer. So um, that's another way, like I said, that you can get really involved in, in, in the community and doing service. And it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty intense because you're doing about six hours a week um, at that same site um, every week, so. That's um, the second way for service. And then our third kind of way that you can get involved in serving in the community is through classes that you take. So we have a lot of different classes that have a service component built into them. Um, and really it just depends on your major, but there's nursing classes that have like a community health component where you'd go and do service maybe for a nonprofit or I mentioned JAPA earlier. We've had students in like our community health class that have worked with JAPA where they've gone out and tried to do assessments at the homeless camps or help administer flu shots um, out in the community. So there's lots of different ways that you can get service, um, service hours within the classroom. Um, we have a, a large human services um, department um, that does um, a lot of hours in the human services field and in sociology and psychology classes. And so they'll go out and serve um, hours that are part of that class, but then they're getting um, actual experience out in the community as well. So um, there's several different classes that do that. Um, and um, it's just, it's a great way to, to get that experience. And I can't stress enough how awesome it is um, to be in the Des Moines community and to have just a number of different nonprofits to partner with. Um, so we can really match the students up with their interest because I always tell the students when they're looking for service sites to pick something that they're interested in. So it's not a chore to go and volunteer or do your service. Like it's not just you're checking that off um, because we don't want it to be just a box that you're checking off. We really want it to be an experience that you can learn from and maybe um, grow from. We've had students, I've had a couple students who have done service and thought that they wanted to do something for a career. And then once they volunteered, they're like, okay, no, I want to look more at the nonprofit um, area and, and completely change their majors. And so sometimes just getting that experience um, is important. And I think it's really important for students that are undecided on what they want to do as well. It's a great way for them to get that experience and and kind of see, okay, do I want to work with kids? Do I want to work with the, maybe in the elderly population? Um, do I want to work in a hospital setting? There's so many different um, avenues for service that you can, can explore and kind of feel that out. So those are kind of the three areas of service that I oversee. Um, one thing I will say about, we 
um, Susie mentioned our leadership, um, different leadership programs that we have on campus and our clubs and organizations. All of them um, are really committed to doing service projects throughout the year as well. So if you're really involved in any sort of campus organization, you will do some service throughout your time just involved in those organizations. So it's just kind of ingrained in some of the things that we do here on our campus. So you can get really involved, um, like I said, with volunteering or doing service and getting civically engaged. So I think that's it. Any questions? So um, I'm going to start. Thank you, Heidi. That was really great for you to go through everything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start going through a couple questions that we received. Um, so just chime in if this applies to you guys. Um, so what is the coolest internship slash job opportunity that you helped a student get? Mm. I, let's see. That Excuse me, a sec. <laughs> I'm parched right now. Throw one down. Okay, there's my voice. Boy, it's lacking today. Um, I would say Google, um, a Google internship in California. Yeah, that was before Google was here. So that was pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah. That's a good question. Do you nursing and education majors need an internship? Um, that's a good question. So nursing students are going to have they're going to have clinical rotations, and education students are going to have student teaching. So that's what they have. They don't have to have an internship, but they can. Yep. And do all other majors other than those two that you last said, do they require internships? They don't, not all majors do, but the majority of Grandview majors do require an internship. Yep. So I think it's like 80% of our academic majors actually require. Yep. What kind of volunteer opportunities um, are you, brought to campus slash what, like, what are your favorite opportunities that are brought to campus? Um, I would say, I didn't mention this when I was going through kind of what Viking Volunteers does, but one of my favorite on-campus events that we do, um, it's a week-long event, um, really. It's MLK week, and we do a whole week of service. So we do a service project every day that week, um, and Meals from the Heartland is kind of in the middle of that week, and we usually get about three to 400 volunteers um, on one day to package meals. And that's always a really fun day just to, to get students and staff and faculty. And we get alumni to come back and do that as well. So that's really fun. Um, one of, I think one of the students' favorite things to do is a lot of times they'll make, um, they do this a couple times a year where they partner with an animal rescue um, in the area and they, um, the rescue usually brings animals to campus. And so um, they'll make pet toys and, and things like that or pet beds and donate those to the, um, to the agency that we're working with. But the highlight is to have those animals on campus is pretty fun. So um, it, that's, that's one of the big things on campus um, that we do. But MLK week of service in general is just a really fun week. The students plan that and I get to kind of sit back and let them, um, you know, come up with ideas for that week. But M yeah, MLK is probably my favorite. And then our, um, you've kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but our um, service hours required on campus? So um, in general, no, we don't have a service hour requirement that some institutions do for every student. However, within your major, you may have some service hours. Like I know human services major has um, service hours that they have to do. Um, and like I talked about the nursing class, that's a required class that students take in the nursing department. So just within your major, you might do some, but in general, um, there's not a general requirement across the board. And Heidi, remind me too, don't some athletic teams also do yes. some opportunities? 
Yes. So a lot of our athletic teams um, do stuff in the community. Um, I know football and wrestling both have gone to schools and read with kids and done um, different service projects. A lot of the athletic teams, when we do that Meals from the Heartland, they'll come as a team and package meals. Um, there's, yeah, all the teams kind of do some sort of service project throughout the year, at least, at least one. Several of them do, I mean, several of them, like our soccer team holds a a camp on campus for, um, and it's not just a regular like soccer camp where your mom and dad sign you up and you pay a fee. Um, they do it kind of free to some of our um, local kids um, and they invite them to come to campus and, and they work with them. So um, yeah, every year it looks a little different for the athletic teams, but they're very involved in service. Perfect. And then Susie, you mentioned a little earlier that um, we have multiple networking opportunities that come to campus. Yeah. Um, do we have like a certain number each year? Are they always in the spring? Are they kind of spread yeah. throughout? Yeah, that's a good question. It happens throughout the year. Um, and it's, you know, right now it's in person and virtual, but mostly virtual. So it's year round, um, lots of activities. So yeah, Perfect. yep, career fairs, pre-select interview days, networking events, speed networking, mock interviews, um, visit days with employers. It's, it's all over the board. So, yep, no shortage, no shortage. Even in a pandemic, there's no shortage. So, yeah. Perfect. I don't think we had any more questions come in. Um, Lupita, do you have anything that you can think of? No, I think that's, that's, a uh, pretty good set of questions. And I think you guys both did a fantastic job kind of explaining your roles and what Granby has to offer. So thank you so much for your time. And we will be posting this video on our website for students to kind of refer back to in the future um, as they kind of go through the admissions process and talk about, or maybe start deciding between schools. Um, uh, Obviously, uh, prospective students, if you're watching this, reach out to us here in admissions. You can find us um, uh, by going to our website at grandview.edu and then uh, clicking on the directory. You'll be able to find uh, Megan, who is one of our first year admissions counselors, um, or myself, Lupita Aquino, under first year admissions. And then Susie and, and Heidi are also on there. So if you have any specific questions, you're welcome to kind of send those our way. All right. Thank All you right. so much. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have a good day. You too.